loving Father, this is indeed our prayer this blessed evening. We need thee every hour in joy or in pain. We are here, O oh God, in this special service, O oh God, to commemorate that which our Lord Jesus Christ did on the eve of the day that he was crucified. Father, we pray that may you speak unto us. There are those who have joined us, O oh God, who are at home, those that are on their way, and those that are still in their offices, Father, I pray that as we share your word, may you also reach out to them. Use me as a vessel, Lord, to bless your church and minister to me as I minister to your people. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us have our seats. This evening, I will be sharing with us from the gospel that was read to us that is from the book of uh, John chapter number 13 verse 1 downwards and I will also touch the book of uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 through to 11 and I'll be sharing about uh, sharing God's love through service. The time in this passage, uh, the Apostle John is recording to us the events that took place the day before our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. And if you can read from verse 1 through to 11, you see that at this point, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ did something that he never, he had never done before. Because all along, he could wake up in the morning, go to a solitary place, pray, and then come back to minister to the people. He could heal the sick, he could bring the dead back to life. But on this very day, it was a special day to him, to his disciples, and also to the history of the church. And what he did, he called his disciples together for a fellowship. And actually, they were united. They were serving, they were eating together. And as a church, we know that this is where we get one of our sacraments, which is the Holy Communion. And that the, the Bible says that as they were seated together, something had happened in that the enemy had, had already entered Judah. Church, let us be awake in the spirit because many a times when we think things are well, that is when the enemy also gets in. And as he was serving, as people were serving, the Bible said that Jesus took the towel, wrapped on his waist, and then he started washing uh, his disciples' feet. And he did that, and when he came to Peter, Peter said, Not me, Lord. But Jesus said that, uh, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. To me, I can say that this was a message, that it was a summary of all that Jesus had done with them or had taught them from the day he called them. And so he was kind of summarizing everything that he had done in two things. Number one, love. Number two, service. And that is why I say that I'll be sharing about sharing God's love through service. And actually, towards the end, he says that 
now that you know these things, huh, you will be blessed uh, if you do them. We all know that uh, for the service to be rendered, there has to be a master. And for it to be done in the right way, we also know that there has also to be a servant. And these servants must be ready to serve and he must be someone who understands his job well. On the other hand, the servants also need experience. And these people are experienced because they had walked with Jesus for almost three years. And the time had come that our Lord Jesus Christ was going back to the Father. Then he's telling them that just as I have done, go do the same. There is something that Jesus knew that indeed his disciples are experienced. And they are ready to work. But the challenge was, huh? he was not calling them to be masters, but servants. Church, we have not been called to be masters, but servants. And so in this passage, we are being taught, we are being reminded that as a church, we need to be servants and not masters. And one thing we can learn that also uh, Paul is talking about in uh, his letter to the Philippians, he talks about humility. And this shows that uh, experience without humility is nothing. Experience without humility is nothing. And so for those of us who have also been called because we know as a church we have been called to serve the Lord, we need to understand the importance of humility. And actually, anyone who is humble will never have problem with uh, being loyal. If you are humble enough, loyalty will be automatic. And at this point, Jesus was indeed being loyal to his father who had sent him. He was ready to fulfill his mission. And so he was loyal enough, humble enough to take up the position of a servant. My brothers and sisters, we need to know that in this ministry, God has called us to be his servants. God has called us to serve him, not to be masters. I want to say that uh, Jesus summed up his lesson on humility and service not by giving instructions, but by demonstration. In that he took a towel, wrapped himself, and then he started washing his disciples' feet. Many a times, we are good at instructions, but doing so badly when it comes to taking action. This evening church, it's good for us to know that the best way to touch people's heart is through service. The best way to touch people's heart is through service. It is true we have been called to share the good news. But for this message to sink, we need to demonstrate love. And actually this love is what made our Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross, he demonstrated it. And so for us to serve God, or for us to get an opportunity to serve God, or to teach, to share love through service, I want to say that number one, we have 
to maintain the unity of believers. Maintaining the unity of believers. The fellowship that Jesus had uh, with his disciples was meant to bring them together. Imagine the fellowship that also brought in the person who had already been stolen by the enemy. But this fellowship, the unity that was there was not exclusive but inclusive. Church, let us be united. Let us have the unity of purpose. Let us have that unity of faith. In that through that we shall now get opportunity to serve others. And actually what we need to do, what we need to help them, uh, what we need to do in order for them to understand this love is through service. We realize that in this fellowship, despite that the fact that Judah had already betrayed our Lord Jesus Christ, he came so close to him to an extent that he kissed him. I wish he could repent. I wish he could turn away from his sins. But because Jesus, his ministry was a ministry of inclusivity in that everybody was on board. Church and the family of S.E.K. St. Thomas Aquinas. I want to tell you that None of us should be left behind. We need you on board in everything that we are doing as a church. This will give us an opportunity to bring people more closer to God. Maintaining the unity of believers. My brothers, don't allow quarantine and lockdown deny you an opportunity to reach out deny, deny you an opportunity to check on your brothers and sisters just get to know how they are doing and since so doing you will be indeed extending the love of God this can only be done through service number two we must be willing not only to talk about love, but demonstrating it. We must not only speak about love, but be willing to demonstrate it. Demonstrating love is not easy. Many people will tell you, I love you. But when it comes to Proving that love through action. This is where you will see many people turning away. Jesus did not turn away from his church, from his followers, from his calling, from his purpose. When the time came for him to prove or to express that love. Through action. And this is what Philippians talk, is talking about. That indeed, that he left his throne in glory and took the form of a human and died on the cross. He expressed this love through action. Number three. We must be willing to go an extra mile. And this is where God says that uh, as his servants, we must be ready in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. We must be willing to serve God in season and out of season. Jesus went through different seasons. Last Sunday was a Palm Sunday. 
And it was a season of praise in that everybody was singing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And actually the disciples felt so good uh, uh, walking behind him. But we see what happened after this passage. Even Peter himself denying him. Because he realized, he thought it was not the right season to serve the Lord. Quarantine should not change our mind when it comes to service. Lockdown should not change our mind when it comes to Christ, uh, to, 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 to service. Let us know that the prohibition of a public worship should not rob us opportunity to share the love of Christ with other people. Brothers and sisters, let us be willing to go an extra mile. By doing so, people will understand the love of God more clearly than using biblical or theological vocabularies. Remember there is your neighbor who may not understand what agape love is without your visitation. There is that sister, that drunkard who may not understand what people mean by agape love unless you visit them. Our parents, our relatives may not understand what agape love is all about if you won't be willing to go an extra mile. A story is told of a pastor who one day wanted to surprise his parishioners. And so he came very early in the morning and on that day, he decided to be the usher. And so he stood at the door as people were walking in. And everybody who came in, he gave them a warm hug. And he went ahead to kiss them. And this happened. And it happened that there were some street children who were also around. And some people looked at themselves. Some of these street children looked at themselves and they said, oh no. He cannot kiss me. But one of them gathered courage and went the way he was. And actually, as the line was coming close to the end, the pastor was like, now what will I do? Because that kiss and that hug was only meant for his parishioners. But it happened that there was a visitor. And the visitor had not taken bath for some time. The visitor has not brushed his teeth for some time. And actually he just came. He just came that I will see what he will do. And actually when he came, the pastor went ahead, hugged him, and kissed him. And actually this street boy jumped up and shouted, He has kissed me, my brothers and my sisters. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. You can be like this street child because our Lord Jesus Christ is here and he has demonstrated his love by dying on the cross. Not only for those whom we may think are saints, but even to those who are outside there. Brothers and sisters, let us be willing to go an extra mile. It's unfortunate that at times when it comes to service, people normally serve with selfish, selfish ambitions. People want to know that what should I gain? What should I keep? What should I get? And actually people will tell you me, I'm not ready to be used. I don't want to be taken for granted. And this is what has made uh, many of our churches to stall and even the ministry of evangelism
to kind of stall. Why? Because people are always concerned about what shall I get back. And actually in the book of Philippians chapter 2 it's all about imitating Christ. And so my last point huh, is all about developing a Christ like attitude. Hallelujah. Developing a Christ like attitude. At times, Christians we normally become moody based on the season, based on the remuneration, based on the maybe tokens of appreciation, based on the kickbacks. But developing Christ-like attitudes help us to express or to share God's love without boundaries. Praise the Lord. Developing Christ-like attitude helps us to share the love of Christ without boundaries. This is where we are be willing to go an extra mile. This is where we, will, we shall do things out of selfish ambitions. You are doing it knowing that I am doing it for Christ. So church, this evening as we commemorate what our Lord Jesus Christ did over 2,000 years ago, I appeal to you, let us share the love of God through service. And he said that uh, whoever wants to be the great, whoever wants to be great must be the servant of the others. Praise the Lord. Service is key. And so when it comes to godly things, for you to go up, you must be willing to come down. And Jesus came down. That is why he was lifted. Hallelujah. Above every name. And this is what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Why? Because he was willing and more than willing not only to wash his disciples' feet but also to die on the cross for my sins, for your sins. My brother, my sister, you may be there and you're wondering whether indeed Jesus can forgive you your sins, where indeed your name can be written in the book of life. I want you to just gather courage like this street boy who came and stood on the line and actually he was also kissed. Today Jesus is ready to receive you back. God is ready to welcome you home. God is ready to give you more strength and fill you with his spirit that you may continue in his service. I want to give you a chance. Just invite Jesus in your life. And I want to tell you that he will take over. He will walk with you. He will encourage you. He will lead you and take hold of you by his right hand. And the Bible says, that now that you know these things, you have no excuse but to do them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.